the party was nice, the party was bumping. Welcome to South Sound Seniors, a program for and about older adults in our community. I'm Eileen McKenzie Sullivan, and just glad that you're here. We've got some wonderful guests for you this month. Um, you know, every other month we have a program that the Senior Action Network helps to provide the programming, and that's what we are doing for this show today. And I am very excited to welcome Danny Sabina. Am I saying that? Sabia. Sabia. Anne and Howie. Yes. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. So Anne, you are both here, and Danny, to talk about animals, but I'm going to try to get your titles right. So Anne, you are Human Animal Solutions, the owner of that business, yes. the founder and yes. owner of the business. Okay. I'm a counselor, mental health counselor, and a dog trainer. Okay. Um, so I provide those types of services in my business. All right. Well, welcome. And Danny Sabia, got it right very time. Good. And you are an employee of Providence, mm -hmm. is that right? And you run the Animal Assisted Activities and Therapy Program. Correct. Well, I'm excited because I know you're going to be talking to the Senior Action Network also in the month of August. And I'm going to have a heads up on everybody because I'm going to learn about it tonight. So um, it's really nice to have you here. Thank you. So just a little bit, how did you get into working with animals and patients. So I'm gonna start with you, Anne. Sure. Well, I grew up on a farm in Idaho. I was way out in the country and I was an only child. So the animals were my friends, they were my playmates. And most children grow up thinking that animals are human. I think I never really lost that. I think I still have that characteristic. So the animals were a big part of my life and they still are. When I was finishing my master's degree and feeling very, very, very finished with school, thinking there was nothing that could make me go back to school, I read an article about something that we now call animal assisted therapy. And my first inclination was, wow, I would go back to school for that. So I realized that was something I needed to pay attention it to. It struck a chord. It did. Mm -hmm. um, very much resonated within me. So I started volunteering with a local program that was in Dallas, Texas. Um, and then we moved out here and I was able to work with um, St. Peter Hospital mm -hmm. and get the program started there and integrated into my own private practice. So it's been an amazing journey. Wow. That's great. How about you, Danny? How did you get involved? Well, you know, all going back to childhood, <laughs> all of my life, I... I've always been drawn to animals, just love animals, have had dogs all of my life. and But I didn't want to be a veterinarian because I didn't want to work with broken and bloody dogs. Mm -hmm. um, I thought about wildlife biology, but I didn't want to trap animals and collar them. and So I was struggling with what to do with that passion and then learned about animal-assisted activities and therapy and thought, working with people, working with healthy dogs, <laughs> I'm not caging anything. And I uh, was fortunate enough to go to Evergreen State College where you can put together your own learning contracts mm -hmm. and spent two years there, my last two years, researching animal assisted activities and therapy in the United States and in Washington. And lo and behold, I find out that one of the premier programs in the country is around the corner for me at Providence St. Peter Hospital. So that's how we met, and mm -hmm. that's how I learned about this program. And eventually when Anne went on to do animal-assisted activities and therapy at the national and international level, oh, there was an opening at Providence <laughs> that she asked me if I wanted to fill, and I yes. said, let me think about it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that it's a wonderful service in our community and in our hospital. I'm going to tell you, my son was a frequent flyer with asthma to the hospital as a child, and visits from volunteers with oh. animals was the highlight of his many hospital oh. stays. Here? Yes, at here at Providence oh, St. Peter, I yeah. I realized that. Yeah, so it was very special for our family, definitely. Well, thanks for saying that. Yeah. We so often don't know mm -hmm. the kind of impact that happens until something like this happens, and we learn from someone who remembers way back when, and yeah. thank you. Yeah, that you means bet. a lot. So you must know some stories where that really there is a interaction between the volunteer and their um, therapy animal that they bring to the hospital or to whatever therapy situation mm -hmm. that you're in. So can you share maybe a story or two about that? 
I'm going to share a story from my private practice because mm -hmm. um, often people will say, well, how does this animal assisted therapy thing work? Um, and there are ways that it can work within a private counseling session as well as ways that it can work in the hospital. Um, so I'm going to give an example of one woman who had come in to me saying that she was um, just stressed in her job and having a hard time dealing with her stress. Uh, and so I asked her if she would be willing to do an exercise with my dog. The dog at that time was Lightning, a white standard poodle. And so he laid on the couch and I gave her a brush and I asked her just to brush him from his head down to his tail. And she did maybe three strokes and then he lifted up his head and he looked at her and she said, why did he look at me? I don't know. Why do you think he might have looked at you? And so she thought about it and she said, well, my mind started to wander and I lost track of what I was doing. And so she realized maybe her pressure had changed because he hadn't looked at her. He hadn't growled. Uh, he hadn't looked at her askance or growled. It was just he had looked at her. Um, and so she realized from that tiny little incident that her mind was wandering a lot and that that was part of her stress. Uh, and when she saw that that had affected the dog, she cared a lot about the dog feeling okay and that made her have a different awareness of where her mind was at all times. And that was the beginning of many insights that she got just with that simple interaction with the dog. Wow, uh -huh. how interesting. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah. Wow. That's just one example, Danny. Yeah. You have. Well, you know, Eileen, going back to um, what you just said about your son who mm -hmm. had been in the hospital. So we, the program has been up and running at Providence since 1989. And wow. like you said, back when it was absolutely unheard of to bring a dog into the hospital. So we've been around long enough. So now that when we go out into the community and we have booths set up, we have lots of people who come to us and say, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, my son was in the hospital for four days and it was the worst four days of my life. And come to find out it was 10, 12 years ago mm -hmm. and they can still tell us the name of the dogs that came to see them. Wow. That's the kind of impact that it has they never remember the handler's name. And that's okay with the handlers. That's, that's totally okay with the handlers. But I think that's a really poignant point when mm -hmm. 12 years later, in the midst of one of the most horrible experiences in their lives, right. they can remember the name of the dog that came to see them. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but separate from the kind of therapy that she was talking about, one of the types of therapy that we do at the hospital, so I should probably explain animal-assisted activities mm -hmm. and animal-assisted therapy. It's a very long name. So animal-assisted activities are visits that are more social in nature. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that they can't be therapeutic, but it's, but it's not. The difference is that animal-assisted therapies are conducted with the assistance, with the inclusion of a therapist who's mm -hmm. working in their field. Mm -hmm. And they are working with a patient to achieve specific goals. So okay. it is mm -hmm. therapy. Whereas the animal assisted therapy, animal assisted activities visits are more social in nature. We're going, we're spending time with patients who've been in the hospital all day, giving them something to talk about and talk, people to talk to, sure. talk about their own pets at home. On the inpatient medical rehabilitation unit at the hospital, on Thursday mornings, um, we have teams go in and the animals are actually incorporated into patients' therapy plans. So mm -hmm. they'll work with speech therapists, occupational therapists, uh, recreation therapists, physical therapists, to help them achieve goals that the patients are trying to achieve. And so it, it could be something as simple as Many of the people's have had, many of the patients have had strokes. Mm -hmm. So it could be a, something like they're learning how to stand up again out of a chair. And so to do that, when you, when you go to stand up out of a chair, you have to lean forward first. And that's mm -hmm. the very first thing you have to do to be able to stand up. And if you've had a stroke, that can be a scary thing. Just that moving forward mm -hmm. can really mess with people's balance. And it can be a, a scary thing to just lean forward. So we'll bring a dog in. We'll ask the dog to lay at their feet mm -hmm. and just say, can you pet the dog? 
And they're not thinking about it being scary, and they're not thinking about how hard it is mm -hmm. to get their balance and stand up. They're not thinking about standing up. They're like, yes, I can pet that dog. Mm -hmm. And they'll lean right over and they'll pet the dog. Wow. And yeah. it is. It's wow. I mean, you can see physical therapists who have been doing this for years, they're mm -hmm. still always like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Or if they have to walk down to the end of the hallway with this brand new walker mm -hmm. with legs that are now heavy. Mm -hmm. That's me. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> um, uh, the end of the hallway seems really far away. Right. But if they have to walk with a dog next to them mm -hmm. and they have to make sure that their walker isn't going to wheel over the dog's mm -hmm. foot and we might put the dog on the affected side that, that has been affected by the stroke, mm -hmm. all of a sudden they're paying attention to the dog and making sure that they're not running the dog over and they've walked to the end of the hallway. And again, physical therapists, we've been trying to do this for a week and we this uh -huh. is the most progress that we've made in yeah. five minutes. Wow. Even someone who doesn't have full use of their hands might be willing to try to reach into a bag to grasp a treat for a mm -hmm. dog and then be able to feed that to the dog. So they're using their hands in the way that seems very natural and normal to them, but yet is much more rewarding to do that for a dog than it is to pick up a particular piece of equipment that the right. occupational therapist has them working with. Yeah. So how much of a struggle was it back in 1989 mm -hmm. to get the hospital to say, sure, bring the dogs in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think struggle may be the wrong word, but definitely it took effort. Mm -hmm. um, it took about one year of meeting with various committees to get them to say that, yes, it was all right for us to try a pilot program in the psychiatric unit, not a medical floor, um, but still part of the hospital. Um, and they would use a six month trial period first to decide whether or not it was something else, that, something that could continue. Mm -hmm. um, it, that was very, very well rece received. Um, and there were a couple of people from medical floors that were just waiting. They had their, um, they had everything in line so that they could say, okay, we want to be next. And yes, indeed, it took about another year and a half to be able to gain all the approvals needed to go on to the medical floors. Um, but in sitting down and meeting with them, talking with them, addressing their concerns, everybody realized, you know, we all want the same thing. Yeah. We want um, great service for our patients. We want to help them get better. We certainly do not want to make things worse. So. Yeah, it's a um, it's it's been a really rewarding experience working mm -hmm. with the hospital staff. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, Danny, I've got a question because you're there at the hospital now. So locally here, about how many volunteers do you have working with animals? We right now have about um, 50 volunteers in the program. Now that's 50 human volunteers. Uh -huh. And of those 50, about 30 of them are working with their therapy animals mm -hmm. and their, their personal companion animals. Mm -hmm. um, we have about um, 29 dogs and one very brave cat. Uh, <laughs> this is on the psychiatric unit. And then the other volunteers in the program are what we call unleashed partners. I love so, that term. <laughs> so they've been in the program uh, for, they can be unleashed for a lot of different reasons, but many of them have been in the program long enough that they started visiting with their own animal and who has passed away or mm -hmm. who has retired from the program. And But they love the mission of the program so they have stayed on as Unleashed Partners. Mm -hmm. so. Wow, and what kind of training do they have to have or certification or? It's a very stringent uh, comprehensive training program that they go through to be a volu uh, PAT volunteer at the hospital. Um, it's a minimum of 40 hours of training before they can ever walk into the hospital with their own therapy animal. And um, most of that is classroom training. And we talk about how to recognize stress in your animal, what to do about that, um, the kinds of behaviors that we're looking for ther in therapy animals, um, how to read body language. Uh, we take that very seriously. Um, we don't want we don't want to bring teams into the hospital because the handler really wants to do this. We want to make sure that the animal really wants to do this as much as the handler does. Um, so 
after the training, the teams have to go th through and pass a team evaluation where they get to show, they get to demonstrate that they work well together as a team, that the animal really wants to do this, that they have the skills th that they need to do that. So it's way beyond just sit and stay and that <laughs> kind of thing. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. Right. So, Anne, on your, in your own business and Tra training and bringing this concept to other communities. Um, how do you know, how does the community know how to get in contact with you? How does that work? Well, in this new age of social media, <laughs> that is one of the ways I'm still learning myself about how people are finding out about me. Um, their word of mouth is still very, very important. Mm -hmm. And the contacts that I have made over the years uh, across this nation and internationally, I still hear from people, still connected with some of the people from many years ago and meet new people. Um, Danny and I, just a couple of uh, summers ago, were at an international conference uh, together and meeting all kinds of people from all around the uh, the world who are doing working mm -hmm. with animals and to help wow. people. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, then there's website. I have my website and and mm -hmm. certainly get lots of emails every day and telephone calls. Really happy to be working with people to help them have a program that meets their needs mm -hmm. and helps their community. Great. And you brought a picture of one of the I animals did. that you work with. I did. In fact, um, this is. Uh, f let's see, Gusto is on my right mm -hmm. and Flair is on my left. Both of those work with me as therapy dogs. Gusto just works with me in my counseling office. He mm -hmm. does not go out into facilities or the hospital. Flair um, works with me. I see hospice patients. Oh, wow. And she goes with me to see hospice patients. Wow. Um, she has started to visit in the hospital. In fact, here is her business card business from card the hospital. <laughs> um, she is just getting started with that and, and mm -hmm. figuring out how that might fit into her life, her uh -huh. busy career. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And you brought a book as well. I did. I am very, very thrilled about this book. This is called Teaming with Your Therapy Dog. Mm. Um, this is my latest book. It was just released in April. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are trainings available for people with their dogs to visit with hospitals or um, schools, nursing homes. But so far, other than local, like Danny's program, they have always focused on how the handler interacts with the patient, not what they did with their dog. Mm -hmm. So this book is all about what you do with your dog and how you support your dog, how you provide that kind of emotional and physical support so that the dog um, not only knows that you're there, but can um, work even more effectively by receiving that kind of support. So one of the things that makes me very happy about this too is that it features heavily volunteers in Danny's program. Mm -hmm. Lots of photographs. They, the hospital was gracious in allowing me to um, take photographs. Mm -hmm. uh, so Wonderful. Excellent. Thank you for excellent. And I will say, even though the title mentions therapy dog, really the information is about all species and mm -hmm. it, the information is applicable to animals that are not therapy animals, but mm -hmm. are our companions at home as well. All right. Well, thank you for bringing that in. And so, Danny, if somebody, this is primarily shown in Thurston County, um, if somebody is interested in finding out more about volunteering, wanting to call and see if their their pet might be a right for training, mm -hmm. how can they get a hold of you? Well, let me preface that by uh -huh. saying, um, because it is such a great and fun thing to do with your companion animal, um, and because it is very time and labor intensive. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have a lot of attrition in mm -hmm. the program, and we focus, we definitely focus on uh, quality instead of quantity. Mm -hmm. And so it just works out that we only um, offer trainings every other year. Okay. And we just had uh -huh. one this year. Okay, so, so they'd have to wait a while. planning on mm -hmm. doing another training until probably 2017, the, the spring of mm -hmm. 2017. But I'm always collecting names and addresses, and I always have a waiting list going. And so they can contact Providence St. Peter Hospital, um, the phone number? Four sure. nine four nine three seven six two nine. Okay. Or Danny dot at org. Okay. Um, and just let me know, and I can send out some preliminary pre preliminary information about what it is that we're looking for in handlers and therapy animals, uh -huh. and they can start working and training and preparing that way. But 
training won't be for a little bit. Okay. Yeah. And I do offer therapy dog training classes. Mm -hmm. So even though people might not be getting into the hospital program, there are other facilities that are interested in people having people volunteer with their animals. Okay. And so I can give people information there as well. And how can um, they contact you? To, my yeah. website is uh -huh. humananimalsolutions.com. Dot com, mm -hmm. And my email address is humananimalsolutions at comcast.net. All right. Well, thank you so much. And I look forward to hearing more at the Senior Action Network. And if anybody that's listening is interested in that, it will be taking place the 4th Tuesday in August, bright and early in the morning at 7.30 is when we start to meet. So you got to get up early for that. So thank you so much thank for you. coming in and explaining. And it's just a wonderful program. What a great Thank you for starting it, and thank you for keeping it going. And Thanks for um, inviting us. We really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Okay. So please stay with us. We're going to be back in just a minute with another wonderful guest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 